Baldy joined us yesterday. Check out the podcast, 95.7 Game or the Odyssey app. Brian Baldinger said a lot. He didn't think the Niners should go after Tom Brady. He said it's a young man's game. When you think about all the quarterbacks who were left in the final eight, Brian Baldinger was all over that, as this is a Warriors Wednesday brought to you by Freeman's Appliance, a trusted name since 1922. Visit freemansappliance.com today. And they wrote Red and Gold Reaction brought to you by Boxer and Gerson. Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm helping good your workers get their lives back for over 40 years. All right, a couple things here. Warriors play the uh, T-Wolves tonight. 5 o'clock, Warriors Live begins at 4 p.m. We know that. We'll get to the Warriors a little bit later. They're looking to win their fourth straight game. Maybe things are changing. Since Mouthpiece Gate? Since Mouthpiece Gate, they're fifth in the West. Fifth in the West. Sacramento, they're coming for you. By the way, it's really cold in Minnesota. We had a oh, quick layover in Minnesota. Oh, my God. I totally got forgot off that about plane. this. Got off that plane. It was six degrees. Six. Zero six. Right now, it's negative five. Jay Cutler number six. <laughs> it was. LeBron, yeah, six. It was It was rough. It was cold. You could, Bill Russell. It was freezing in that airport. Freezing. All right. Well, you know what, B, for just a, sm- Ta- a second here. Like, can we both agree that right now there's an infatuation in the league to do one thing? Uh, if you're a team that's looking for a quarterback, find the guy, a rookie on a rookie deal, or excuse me, a quarterback right. on a rookie deal, so that their salary is suppressed. Build the roster around them. Like that's that's what a lot of teams are trying to do. It's what Kansas City did with with Patrick Mahomes. That's what Cincinnati's done with right. Joe Burrow. And then right. you surround that guy with a ton of talent. Right. No doubt. Then if the guy's great. You, you break them off the money, and you slowly have to like make tough decisions on the rest of your roster, but you hope that that guy is worth every ounce. Now, there's two different people. Patrick Mahomes, you can't pay him enough money. Then you got someone like Dak Prescott, where you overpaid that guy, right. and it feels like you, the roster's not good enough around him, even though it is very good. He's not worth the squeeze. Right. So the Niners are in an advantageous situation, whether it's Trey, Brock Purdy. If one of those two can be the guy, and you're hoping it's going to be Purdy. A lot of people are, are optimistic, as am I. Uh, even if it's Trey, you're trying to find this guy on that dirt cheap salary so I can keep Nick Bosa, so I can find a way to right. re-sign all these other guys, shore up my offensive Brandon line. Ayuk, who Brandon you're going to have Ayuk. to break off at some point. Right? So, to me, if I'm looking at team building and I'm looking at, you know, Either or, as frustrating as the injuries and the uncertainty of the young players are, I would much rather keep the pieces I have around right. that young quarterback than go out and spend ten to twenty million on one of these what well, I call band aids. Yeah. I tell you right now, I don't want Derek Carr. No, I don't want Kirk Cousins. No, I don't want Sam Darnold. I don't even want Jimmy. I I, I, do, I don't want Jimmy back. I don't I want don't. Jimmy at ten to twelve million. I, I want don't. to see them commit to Trey or Brock. I with you. And Brock yesterday said he's getting second opinions. Right now, he's got the torn UCL. They're hoping he doesn't have to do full Tommy John and be out for the year. Now, that may be a scenario. He's looking for second opinions right now. Nobody's giving him that second opinion to say, "Yeah, Brock, you're gonna be, you're gonna have to avoid this surgery." I, like nobody's giving him that opinion yet. He hopes to throw the football in three months. I think that's far fetched. I think that's very optimistic. Very optimistic. But if I was them, and if I was in, if I was his dad, and again, I'm not his dad, but if I was his dad, I'd say, "Look, you're 23." We're going to slow play this. The NFL is so violent. Alex Smith came yeah. back too early but, on the shoulder. It set on. him back years. Is Brock good enough to sit back and hold up? Not only does he not make a million dollars a year, he was the last pick of the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. Brock has to play. Brock has to come back. Does he? I think so. But if you Is come- he that good enough to say, you know what? We're going to slow play this and look at my long-term future. He may not have a long-term well, career. Uh, he's so no, small. I, I agree with and that. Frail. But I but I also think what he's done on film has given him a big advantage over Trey Lance right I, now. I think teams are starting to catch up to him. Nobody's going to okay, admit that. We can have that and discussion. We, and we sat back. Yeah, we can have that discussion. We, I saw the dude who put, posted a video of all the intercepted passes, interceptable passes he threw. We saw him struggle in three straight first halves. And when you looked at that field, you looked at the Eagles D line, mm-hmm. and you looked at that defense being fast and physical, just like the Dallas Cowboys. Brock looked a little overwhelmed. Now he did make plays, but Brock Purdy in those last three first halves was very average, very average. I agree with you. It but- was Jimmy. If that was Jimmy Garoppolo, we'd be going crazy. I well, yes, but I think he his highs were higher than Jimmy. I thought they that, were. I thought when he was playing really well, he was better than Jimmy. And then throw a lot of Jimmy Ono throws. Down the stretch. Okay. A lot. I, I thought he made more plays than Jimmy. If he we're did. just looking at he right now, I think Brock's better than Jimmy Garoppolo. That's I mean, I don't think that's a knock on Jimmy. I think that's me elevating Brock right. Purdy. I think his body of work is pretty good right now. Now look, B, 
Anyone can have right. a nice run. Nick Foles, I'm not right. trying to compare the two, but Nick Foles had a great run. Right. He was, was flawless. Never the same. Joe Flacco had a fun, he was so good in the playoffs that year where he had that seven game run. He destroyed everyone. They paid him all the money and he never was as good. We see this in other sports. Guys have moments. Being a great player is doing it year after year after this, year. This is insane. And I would Red, say the same thing Red, that Trey Lance did when he what Brock Purdy I, did. See, I'm buying all my stock in Trey Lance. I never sold it. Yeah, but Red Eye agree? right now, Red Eye right now, Brock is a top fifteen quarterback right now in the NFL. He played like it. Top fifteen? I think he did. Down okay. the stretch. I top think he 15? did. I think that's fair. Right. Now, that, does that mean he's a sustainable top 15? Russell Wilson wasn't a top 15 right. player last and, year. And Dave Johnson. Now, I'm talking about the Arizona game. I'm talking about the Seattle game. I'm talking about the Dallas game. The Philadelphia game, we can't draw anything from that. It was six plays. Six plays. Let's go to the calls real quick. Uh, Joe and Vallejo has been on hold since the start of the show. Let's get to Joe and Vallejo. What's happening? Morning, guys. Morning. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you for helping me wake up every single morning when it's nice and early like this. Appreciate you. Second... Um, I got to say this. I think that Brock Purdy, I, I'm, I'm a Purdy fan. So here's the thing. If he wasn't a seventh round pick and he was a little taller, we'd be talking about, we wouldn't even be talking yeah, but, about But he's him. not taller. But, but, but uh, the, let him finish, Joe. The draft status is irrelevant. Let him finish, Asky. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. You're, no, you're right. But I will say this. Um, I'm not a, tra you know, some guys are so down on Trey Lance. I'm not going to say I'm down on him. I just feel this way. When you have a roster like the Niners do with so many different players on both sides of the ball who are all playing in their prime at the same time. That is so rare. Mm -hmm. and so you got to see Trey Lance for four, five, six games, and then Purdy might be healthy. I like that scenario. If okay. it's a case where Trey Lance is in for the full season, that's a little questionable because you don't want to waste everyone else's prime. Having said that, Shazzy, I do agree with you that I'm skeptical on this whole six-month thing. For Brock that, that's I mean, all. I just, yeah. I, that's, that, that sounds so scary to me. But you know what? I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so we got to wait and play it by ear. Last thing I want to say, shout out Aaron Baines. He's a Bay Area boy. Mm -hmm. Good luck to Miko Ryan's in Houston. We're all yep. in for his success. And, uh, hey, Bonte, can we get shout outs for PG D workers? And the Absolutely. The hard hats in the morning? Yeah. Absolutely. You guys always get my power back on, man, out there in yeah. San Bruno. Shout out to the PG D workers, Joe. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I love you guys, man. You guys do. Nobody gives, they don't get enough credit. A lot of people rip PG D or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Those guys are out there day and night. All day long, on call. They got their phones on them. Shout out to the PG&E workers. So, one thing I believe, and, and whether you want to say the hardball, iron sharpens iron, whatever. I believe in healthy competition. I think it's good. It's good I for everyone. Too. That's why and, I wanted Jimmy to come back last year I, to compete with Trey Lance. And I wanted Trey Lance I, to beat Jimmy straight up. Okay. That's what I wanted last season. I think the greatest, if we were to say, in, in the history of the league, the two guys, and, and I'm not saying that this, this is what this situation, I'm just using this as an example. The greatest opportunity, 1988, Steve Young and Joe Montana heading into that season, competing for the starting job, right. and eventually they made the decision to stick mm -hmm. with Joe Montana. Yep. You basically got multiple MVP seasons yep. back-to-back from Joe and the best version of him. Mm -hmm. Now, some guys crumble, and those guys tell you that they're not the dude. Mm -hmm. I truly believe if you want to get the best out of both guys... Compete. Yes. Now, now that being said... I do believe right now, if I was doing a hierarchy, one guy's at the gold medal stand right, right. now, Brock, Brock Purdy, Purdy. And, and at the right. silver bronze, whatever you want to call it, is Trey Lance. No now, doubt. It could flip-flop, but right now, that's how I'm viewing it. I want to see them compete. I wanted Trey to compete with Jimmy last year, to beat Jimmy in training camp. I, that's what I wanted to see. Let him do it. Let him do it. Who's selling their stock on Trey Lance? Do the Niners need another quarterback? Brady retired this morning, so he's off the table. And I believe this time around, Tom Brady is going to stay retired. I truly believe that. I hope he stays retired. Because I don't, honestly, I don't want Tom Brady winning the Niners. I don't think it's good enough to win a Super Bowl next year. Honest to God. I don't think Brady can win a Super Bowl ever again. Because now what happens if you sign Brady for one year and he doesn't win? Now we're back to the drawing board, going into year eight of Kyle Shanahan, looking for a quarterback. Celebrating his 50th birthday. <laughs> wow.